Hey, I'm Trevor Makes, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the cursed reset circuit of the original Revision A Commodore 64. The original design was so broken that the factory assembly required this awkward bodge wire, and even then, it's still known to break cartridges that rely on resetting the computer externally. Stay tuned, and I'll show you what went wrong and how a single resistor can fix the problem. Okay, so first of all, I want to take a look at how the reset circuit actually works in this Revision A board because not only is it different from how the reset circuit works in later Commodore 64 boards, but it's actually very different from how it looks in even the official schematic for this board. So first of all, the resistor and capacitor that are connected to the trigger pin, the R50 and C105, they're actually just not present on the board at all. And the trigger pin is actually connected to the threshold pin. Uh, like they're directly connected through the PCB. Speaking of the threshold pin, the C24 and R34, those are connected to the threshold pin. However, they're actually flipped upside down from how they appear in the schematic. So you can see this R34 is actually connected to ground instead of being connected to 5 volts. And likewise, the capacitor is connected to 5 volts instead of ground. Then moving on to the output, uh, in the schematic, the output pin is connected to one of the open collector inverters on U8. But in the actual circuit, it's not. In fact, the output is just directly connected to all of the reset pins which is actually what causes the problem with the reset on this board because when the board is not in the reset condition, the output pin is always driving the pin high. And so when you have a cartridge, for example, that tries to pull the reset pin low, it has to do so by fighting the output of the 556 timer being driven high. And speaking of the output, you can see this very obvious bodge wire here that connects from the output pin to the discharge pin. Now, I was a little confused about that at first, but if you look at the data sheet for the 556 timer, you'll see that the output pin is actually not very good at sinking current. It's good at supplying current when the output is high, but when the output's being driven low, it can't sink nearly as much current as the discharge pin is able to sink. And so I'm assuming what happened is they just found that the output pin alone wasn't able to reliably sync all of the current. And so they had to put this bodge wire in place. So now that we know how the reset circuit is actually wired, let's talk about how the 555 timer works. Now, the 555 timer gets its name because of an internal voltage divider made up of three five kilo ohm resistors which creates two reference points, one at two thirds of the supply voltage and another at one third of the supply voltage. And those two reference points are used for the trigger conditions that toggle the output state of the 555 timer. The first condition is when the trigger pin is pulled below the one third reference point, it causes an internal flip-flop to be set, which drives the output pin high and the second condition is when the threshold pin goes above the two-thirds reference point, it causes the internal flip-flop to be reset, which causes the output pin to be driven low. Now, in the case of this reset circuit, the trigger and threshold are tied together, so we can kind of just think of them as one pin. And all we need to do to analyze the circuit is to look at what's going on with the capacitor C24 and the resistor R34. Now, initially, when the computer powers up, that capacitor C24 is going to be discharged. And because that capacitor is in series, it means that the whole five volt supply voltage is going to be dropped across resistor R34. And because the threshold and trigger pins are fed off the top of that resistor, the threshold voltage will initially be above the two thirds reference point, which drives the output pin low and causes the discharge pin to sink current, and it puts all of the chips on the board into the reset state. However, the capacitor is going to gradually charge up through the resistor, and as it does so, the voltage across the capacitor will increase, and the voltage across the resistor will decrease. And so eventually the voltage at the trigger pin will drop down to the one-third reference point, 
which causes the 555 timer to be set, which drives the output pin high and finally pulls all of the chips out of the reset state. Now that we know how the circuit works, we can take the formula for a charging capacitor and solve for the time that it takes for the capacitor to charge up to two thirds of the supply voltage. We find that we get about half of a second, which is exactly how long it takes for the computer to come out of reset. So before modding the reset circuit, I just wanted to probe around with my oscilloscope and just kind of see what the signals look like. So first of all, let's look at the supply voltage. I'll take a look at the supply voltage going to the 555 timer. And it looks good, about 5.03 volts, fairly stable. But if we look at the reset, I'll take a look at it directly off of the 555 timer first. It's only about 3.6 volts and it looks pretty noisy. So. I'll go ahead and just hook into it over here because this is an easy place to grab it. Okay, so let's try power cycling the board. There we go, half a second. So initially the reset goes high and then the 555 timer starts and we get about half of a second pulse there. Let's try it again, power cycle. And so yeah, we get about half of a second of a reset pulse. And so interestingly, it's still pretty noisy when it's being pulled low. I'm not sure if it's normally supposed to be that noisy or if it's possibly from the output driver being damaged. So we can also take a look at what it looks like if we pulse the reset switch. So there's the manual reset switch. Now the reset mod itself involves two different steps. The first is to cut the leg of the 555 timer at the output pin while leaving the bodge wire in place and connected to the PCB. So that's gonna make it so that only the discharge pin is connected to the reset circuit while the output pin will just be left floating. So here's the output pin snipped off uh, while leaving the bodge wire in place. And next we wanna take this unpopulated R36 and install a one kilo ohm resistor. Okay, so I'll flip the board over to make it easier to get to the resistor. It's gonna be this one right here at the bottom. So here the R36 pads are cleaned out. So we can insert our one kilo ohm resistor. There we go, there's our R36 resistor installed. Okay, so we'll go ahead and plug the power back in. Clip the probe to the reset pin. And let's see if we can get a capture of the reset working. So very interesting that that noise is still present, but the reset line is now going up to five volts instead of 3.6 volts as before. Give the reset button a try. Looks a lot cleaner now. For good measure, now we can try a cartridge to see how the reset works. And I'll go ahead and plug the video in as well just to check what's going on there. Go ahead and give this a try. Don't see the leading edge of the reset pulse, but it's still about half a second. Now I'll give the reset button on the cartridge a try. Looks pretty clean. Give the menu button a try. Small reset pulse there. Just out of curiosity, I wanna see what's going on with the output pin itself. It's dropped down to just slightly under three volts. So that noise doesn't seem to be coming from the 556 timer. It must just be coming from one of those chips connected to the reset line. So now that the output pin is clipped off, I wanted to see how much current it's actually able to source directly to ground. Now, if it was working correctly, this could be up to like 200 milliamps, but I have a suspicion that the output driver may have been damaged because it seemed to only be acting like a weak pull-up resistor, given that I was able to use this Kung Fu flash cartridge before and my suspicion was that it may have gotten damaged because of this reset switch that was added by a previous owner. 
and maybe just having been shorted to ground effectively over time as this computer was used may have caused damage to that output driver. So anyway, go ahead and carefully get my probe on the output driver. And yeah, look at that. It's only sourcing about six and a half milliamps, which is not very much at all. And so that would explain why when I first tried using this board before, I wasn't actually having an issue with the Kung Fu flash cartridge. So that wraps up my investigation of the reset circuit. Next time, I'll be taking a look at a few more simple mods to improve the audio and video quality of this Revision A board. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give a like and share so I can grow my audience and keep making more videos like this one. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.